Hello, everybody. Matt Donner here with another breakdown. Uh, I want to start by saying, first of all, I'm sorry because apparently I took way too long in the last video and I got yelled at in the comments. So pay attention. I do. Um, that was Yoda speaking. I do pay attention to the comments. I read them, I, I listen, and I, I care. So today I'm going to do my best to go a little bit faster for those of you with shorter attention spans or more importantly, people who just really want me to get to the effing point. Here we go. Today's song is LMA. The song is Boot Up. It's complexity equals simplicity, but this time it's actually simplicity posing as complexity. It's backwards. It's deeper than you think. And here we go. <laughs> I'm Matt Donner, and this has been The Breakdown. Thanks for watching. Hope that was faster for everybody. See you next time. Too fast? Let me slow it down for you. The song is called Boot Up. The artist is Ella May. She's um, eh, having a little bit of success. I don't know. She's drawn the attention of John Legend and only has about 180 million plays on YouTube. No big deal. Um, this is not your typical EDM song. It's not EDM really at all. This is pop. It's R&B. Uh, flirts a little with hip-hop, flirts a little with gospel in a way, but then all R&B kind of flirts with gospel. We're going to be taking a look at um, some pretty intricate chords. There's some really interesting movement in here. Uh, this song is like a lot of others where there's sort of one main chord progression. It is definitely complexity, and it's been looped out throughout the song. And uh, the secret ingredient here is how to take something complicated and boil it down to its most simple element and give the impression of complexity without actually being complexity, okay? A little bit of both going on here. Uh, there's also something happening here that you've heard me talk about before where uh, two things, in fact. Number one, well, actually, let me list them out for you. Number one is going to be complexity. It is dominant chords that show up as different kinds of dominant chords. So dominance and dominant substitutions, that's number one. Okay. Number two is taking the essence of these chords, breaking them down into the most simple elements, and then presenting them. And number three is taking those simple elements and exploding them across different instruments so you almost never see it all in one instrument. Okay? So it's this very dense nugget of music theory that's been sort of broken apart, deconstructed, simplified, and then distributed. Boot up by LMA. This is my little rendition. I'll just give you the intro because that's all I worked up. Because the rest of the song pretty much does this, I'll just let it go for you. So let me actually get this out of the way. Um, and close this down and let's hit play. Here we go. Remember, this is just the intro. That's a key ingredient, and then this is the other key ingredient. Okay. Let's dig right in, because I don't want to get yelled at for taking too much time again. Here we go. Uh, I have, I don't know that this is what they did. I never know that this is what they did. This is just my attempt to reconstruct what the other artists uh, who have actually done the work uh, have done. Um, and I heard some things, and it, it actually took a while to dig into this one because it was so complex. But here in Logic, I have uh, this track stack. I have one group of MIDI, and we'll take a look at the notes in a moment. And I just want to lay out that I have a section of violas, a section of studio strings, uh, a basic sort of buzzy uh, synth, and then a piano, all making up the main ingredient. Now you might hear a little going on in there. Uh, that is because I automated this part. Um, I put up an EQ, and you can see the EQ here. Um, I heard it on the original, and so I tried to replicate it, and I wasn't sure if it was vibrato uh, speeding up in an organ, and a Leslie like spinning faster and slowing down. It sounded like uh, filtering or phase shifting, so I just did my version of it, and this is an EQ. doing a little dancing. So if you hear that, that's where that comes from. Now the question is, that's great, what exactly is happening here? So let's take a look. We're going to dig in and I'm also going to pull up a piano so I can play it for you at the same time. Uh, number one, we're in the key of B flat minor. It's not the easiest key in the world. I'm not a great piano player, so I'm going to do my best for you. But B flat minor, 
sounds like that. Let me switch sounds because I have a better sound to demonstrate all of this stuff with. And it's this one, the piano play. Here we go. B flat minor, we've got B flat, D flat, and F. Um, those of you trying to replicate this in Ableton, be careful. The clip view will show you A sharp, C sharp, and then F, which is some kind of F chord, F A C. Uh, it's not, it's actually B flat, D flat, and F. So keep that in mind. If you're in logic, huh, you don't care, you get it right. In fact, logic says it, boom, right there, B flat minor. I said number one was dominance, number two was um, dense chords and kind of broken apart, and number three was broken apart and spread across the instruments. So let's take a look at the dense chord, because what you're hearing is not this simple triad. What you're hearing is actually uh, almost the entire scale. This is what I heard, this is what I put down. I don't, again, I don't know again if this is 100% correct or not. Um, I'm doing this all by ear and just doing my best. But what I heard was this, which Logic calls B flat and minor seven, nine, 11, which is a fancy way of saying it's the one, two, three, four, five, skip the six, seven. So seven of the eight notes in the chord or six of the seven notes in, sorry, not the chord, the scale. The scale, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, which we're not using, and then the seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six notes of seven in the scale. That's a lot of words to say. All in one chord. Boom. And when played together, it sounds like this. It's a very, very dense chord. A lot, of, a lot going on in that chord. Now the truth is a B flat minor 7, 9, 11 is actually not a terribly complicated chord when you spread it out. It looks like that. And it sounds kind of bigger, wider, broader, brighter, um, very sort of open and reaching up to the stars. And what they've done is they've taken the chord and collapsed down into this very closed voicing which means all the notes are very tight together. That's number two, okay? Number one is dominance. Now, in the key of B flat, the question is, where does dominance show up? Where should it show up? And for that matter, what the hell is a dominant chord? Okay, a dominant chord, I'm gonna play it in the key, I'm just gonna play it in F. A dominant chord is a major chord with a flat seven. That's the dominant chord, okay? It goes all the way back to Bach and probably before it. Major chord with a flat seven. Now the truth is, quote, it's supposed to be in the fifth note, which means in the key of B flat, one, two, three, four, five, and sure enough, there's F. So you'd hear B flat minor into an F dominant, and then right back to B flat minor, okay? Now the thing is, they do that, but they do more than that. Okay. One of the things that you're going to hear is that there's a C. Actually, that's not a C. There is, there's a, that's what it is. It's F sharp, or in this case, G flat. What is that note doing there is the question. Let me point it out to you where it happens, and then I'll explain why it's here, because what really is happening is that it's here, and then it's here, and then it's back to here. Let me point it out. Not here. This is the dense chord, and then we get into the flat six, major seven, but here. Okay. Second to last chord, last chord, and then repeat. So second to last chord, then last chord. We really need to look at the last chord, then repeat first, because the repeat goes back to B flat. That's your one. The five chord, which in this case is F, is dominant. Dominant loves to go after the one. We love to hear five, then one. Five, seven, then one. So we are gonna hear a five, seven, and then a one. Properly, a one. Okay, five, seven, F dominant, and then B flat, minor seven, the question is, is what's happening before the F? 
Last chord is F, dominant, going to the 1, which is the repeat. The question is, what's happening before it? Dominants love to go to the 1, which means they love to fall a fifth. Now the question is, who's dominating the dominant? Because everybody's got a dominator. In this case, the dominant, the F, has a dominator, and the dominator is a fifth above that, which in our case is C. Now, we could do C dom to F dom into B flat minor 7, 9, 11. That's complexity. It's a secondary dominant in C to a primary dominant in F to the 1 in B flat. That's complex enough. That's not what they do. What I think they do, and I don't know 100% for sure, but what I think they do is they're doing a C full diminished. That's a minor third, that's a minor third, that's a minor third. So this chord, a lot of tension, leads itself into the F dominant, which has lots of tension, which then resolves in the one, minor seven, nine, 11. Now, that's number one, we have dominance. F dom being dominated by C diminished, which is acting like a dominant. So we got C diminished dominant, dominating the F dominant, which is dominating the B flat one. That's a lot of dominating. That's complex enough. Number two, tight nugget of the B flat minor seven, nine, 11. And then number three is that they take it, simplify it and distribute it across the notes. So what really happens is that you almost never really hear this going to this going to this. You almost never really hear that. What happens is that the bass gives you the C, F, B flat. And then a lead up top gives you an F sharp, G flat, G flat, F, C. Okay? So that's what happens. That's what I think happens. So they're taking these really complex chords, at least the C diminished and then the F dom, taking these complicated chords and just saying, oh, well, that's an important note. Let's put that over here. And then, oh, this is an important note and let's put that on the bass. And then, and what about everything else? Screw it. We don't need it. Brilliant. So let's deconstruct it, shall we? If I add this synth line, you will find that it plays a little melody here. That is loud, and there's something wrong with the timing, but we'll let the timing go for now. It plays a little melody here, which is fine. There. Okay. So what happens, let me go back to the piano for a moment and see if I can demonstrate this for you. So we have B flat, minor seven, nine, 11. We have the main piano two note motif throughout the whole song. If we take the B flat, you get, which in and of itself is a fantastic little mini melody. That's all you need. By the way, a Steely Dan song starts that way. Um, I'll have to see if the name comes to me, but I'll see if I can pull it up. There's a Steely Dan song that starts just like that. So all they're doing is thirds. That's a third, that's a third, back to the third, and another third. So that happens in between dense nugget of chord, and then you've got two note simple melody, and then kind of dense nugget of chord, which is, in this case, G flat, major seven. Logic's calling it F sharp. It should know better. It's in the key B flat. So we start with a one chord. There's your flat six Aeolian. And then the flat six blends itself into C diminished. F dom. Back. That's the whole thing. The notes are broken apart. So while the C dom, or C diminished, is happening, these two notes are the most important notes. That's the tritone, it's a flat five relationship, C and F sharp, really C and G flat. And so what happens is that the bass 
plays the C, and the synth plays the F sharp. Okay? The bass will do C while this is doing F sharp, and then the bass will go to F while the synth also goes to F, and then the bass will go back to B flat while the synth goes up to C, the 9, in the B flat minor 7, 9, 11 chord. I'm not sure if everybody's following all of this. You may have to watch this video a couple times. I don't know. It's very, very, it's dense, and then it's sparse, and then it's kind of dense, and then it's really dense, but sparse, and then it's even denser, and but sparse, and then it blows back open to the beginning, right back to density. It's complex, it's simple, it's both, it's going back and forth. There's just a lot of really cool stuff in this song. Let me solo the bass, the synth, and you're going to hear it right about here. Okay. So again, the bass is playing C. Oh, sorry, let me go back to my piano here. While the bass is playing C, the right hand is implying this big fat diminished chord, but the synth is really only playing this note. And then the bass goes down to the one or the five. Synth follows along. And then when you the bass goes back to the root or B flat, it picks up the C. More tension. So they're apart and tense. They're together and stable, and then they're apart, not quite as tense. But we don't really care because we have all these other notes to play with. I'm Matt Donner, and this has been The Breakdown. That's LMA, boot up. I hope this was faster for everybody, and I'm not sure this was a good one to go fast on because it's pretty dense. Um, enjoy it, dig into it, have fun with dominance, dominant substitutions. Um, I think I'll try and figure out what that Steely Dan song is that starts with those notes. Um, I can hear it. Give us some pumped up music to treat you now. The girls don't seem to mind. If you guys know the Steely Dan song, please remind me. I'm drawing a blank right now. Otherwise, uh, it's been great to see you. Matt Donner at The Breakdown here at Pyramind. Um, pay attention come January 2019. Going to be some new cool stuff going on with online classes and mentorship sessions. I think everyone's going to really, really dig it. If you felt like we've been a little out of reach, we should be a lot more within reach coming up in the new year. Hope to see everybody soon. Um, as always, see you later. And... Uh, Enjoy the song, LMA, boot up. 190, 180 million plays, something absurd like that. Lots going on here. music producer and ready to evolve your sound. Find out more about our San Francisco ground campus, online classes, and one-on-one -on -one mentorships at pyramind.com. <laughs>